Hi there guys, and welcome to a video that really has no rhyme or reason. It is just me speaking on how much I really like Avalog and how they fixed him. Because as a Pokemon, when it was introduced in Generation 6, I used it, I had a part of my team, it was never really that great. And, um, well, as far as Moen goes, this Pokemon was never even considered. In Generation 6, it was PU, and um, in the leaks, it was a low tier pick, and really nothing speed for it. The only sets you saw with it was possibly a Soul Vest together with Miracoat. And since this Pokemon had sturdy, it had some niches. But considered it was a raw weak to Stealth Rocks, that sturdy was usually exploited, and uh, it just couldn't carve itself a good enough niche. In Smogun OU in Generation 7, there really wasn't anything else happening. Besides the echo culture for the Pokemon itself that actually was making this Pokemon having a really defined niche. This was the Pokemon that could potentially deal with Landorus. Landorus in Smogun OU of Generation 7 was, and still to an extent are, the Pokemon. Landorus T has always been relevant, always tough to deal with, and Avalux due to its ridiculous high both HP and defense was able to push that Pokemon back naturally. Easily taking an Earthquake could take Stone Edges unless it was a Soul Stand set. And um, Landorus usually run Hidden Power Ice and resisted Hit. The only thing Avalug like resists their Ice after all. And could take Landorus on. And a niche means one thing. It means it has a specific role for an Echo Culture for that meta. That means that there isn't anything like that in Smogun UU or RU, so Avalog is irrelevant to those tiers. But in Smogun OU, it stood out because of that reason. It was one of the few, if not the only, really, that not only checked but also counter <laughs> Landorus in a big essence as it actually could recover against it. I really just want to have that said, as you know, that is the thing that made Avalog great back then. Which wasn't that very good in the leagues. Same issues as Smoke or Generation Six, where yeah, people could pick it, but why would they? There were even Evila Pokémon that was that was used as spinners because Evila was considered a bulkier spinner with recovery, but with a bad defensive timing. So, what happened in Generation Seven? Well, besides the cutting out of was a 300, 400 Pokémon, <laughs> I don't think necessarily all that matters in hindsight. But Avalug got really two big things going for it. First and foremost, the introduction of Heavy Duty Boots made this Pokemon not only one of the bulkiest spinners around that wasn't worried about hazards, but also became a Pokemon that could recover, it could capitalize on get, getting its HP back, as it is physically very, very capable. It can take a physical, super effective hit and actually survive. This is one of the few Pokemon that takes an Iron Head, that takes a close combat, it shrug it off like nothing, and can't retaliate. And not only that, uh, the other big thing it got was Body Press. Now, it gets Aurora Veil, I kind of want to have that mentioned, as that is one of the few niche moves it gets, but the only two real relevant moves it got this generation are Body Press and, I guess, Heavy Slam. But for me, Body Press is where it's at, and for most people, that's where it's gonna stay. Uh, Body Press is a move that uh, is well, 80 base power fighting move, but it also is based on your defense versus your opponent. And since Evelog has 184 base power, well, defense, that Body Press is gonna be huge. Huge! <laughs> it's ridiculously strong. As basically, in, in capillation, let's say you have a Pokemon with a 100 base defense, a um, formidable base defense, you will still do with that in mind, uh, over for of course level 50, have a roughly a more of 132 base power move based on that body press. And uh, take that as a notion with Pokemon being now inherently weaker than that and have a lower base defense, this body press will always do a significant chunk and a combination of the fighting and ice are really great. Now, even like lack Icicle Crash, always have Avalanche. Positive part about Avalanche is that no matter how you twist and turn things, it is still not that speedy, so... In theory, actually, Avalanche is always gonna be significantly better since Icicle Crash has to reflinch 
And you, you're not going to change anything now, are you? Um, but the only, of course, mistake with Able, I, I would say, is that it actually lacks Ice Shot. I would believe that would help this Pokemon's viability somewhat. But this Pokemon resides now in UU and are workable in OU. It still doesn't have a special defense to talk about, and that's alright. But the things they made with this Pokemon to make it better really did make this Pokemon a lot better. It doesn't now, it, it isn't that passive. It actually are able to attack with body press and force matchup back naturally. This is a Pokemon that actually goes toe to toe with the Mamoswine, the most ferocious Pokemon in UU, and it actually deals with um, Cobalion. And in OU, it actually takes on Terrakion. It doesn't kind of do that when it's a choice band in close combat, but it can take it. And the Body Press does a significant chunk, and that is what makes Avalug so extremely well rounded. But, of course, the best part about Avalog is that it now is not only a bulkier Pokemon that can capitalize on recover and aren't naturally weak to acid, as long as it's in the boots, but also we have Spin. This is a spinner that is a tanky spinner with recovery. There really aren't or very few like that. And, uh, like I said, it's not only passive. <laughs> I'm like a big fan of, like I said, Avalog for the longest time, and I've tried to know how to fix it and I had no chance in my mind of thinking that you know all it needed was not a weak to hazards and all of a sudden things come together the design of the Pokemon to be able to recover and spin and now with a move that actually is offensively enough to attack other offensive Pokemon yes this Pokemon has issue yes it has a low special defense and it's always gonna be a Pokemon that switches out against a Chandelure because that fire blast is gonna kill it twice <laughs> but the synergy is false to it so naturally and while it has weaknesses it seems most of those weaknesses at times are physical and it thrives in those matchups and this is something it could have done before but due to the weakness of stealth frogs it would always go to be forced out and the other part which I think is pretty on this one is that due to having only like earthquake and ice glue crash there were always going to be matchups that force it out because it couldn't hit them back with body press that is no longer an issue those high damage passive damage are awesome it doesn't necessarily even need toxic anymore as that body press is just that strong so yeah that's the short history i really really hope you guys enjoyed these kind of episodes i kind of just want to find a pokemon talk about it you know this is one of the few like really really good stories where a pokemon comes back thrives kind of forgotten nobody talks about it anymore but it has now became a staple of UU, and I would never even dream of it. So, with that said, as always, thank you for watching. Make sure to love Avalog as you do, because it is a Pokemon they fucking fixed, and I'm so happy for it. So, take care, everyone. Bye.